Is my like shot, does it look okay for what you yep. need? You're all set. Okay. So, hello everyone, and welcome back to Cantor Laura and Friends. I'm your host, Cantor Laura Bresnik, and today it is my pleasure to welcome my first guest from the West Coast, Cantor Emma Lutz. Cantor Lutz, born and raised in Walnut Creek, California, grew up in a family and community that instilled in her a love of Judaism and music. She graduated Phi Beta Kappa from the University of California, Davis, with degrees in religious studies and music. Cantor Lutz was ordained from the Hebrew Union College Jewish Institute of Religion, Debbie Friedman School of Sacred Music in May 2016. Currently, Cantor Lutz is one of two cantors for Stephen Weiss Temple in LA, which at various times in its history has been labeled the largest Jewish congregation in the world. At one point, having a membership of 3,000 families. Certainly a different environment from Temple Shalom and its 126 families. And this is we are where, where we begin our conversation today. So once again, Cantor Lutz, welcome to the show. So good to have you. Thank you so much for having me. It's it's nice just, you know, as old friends to be able to sit here and talk for a half hour or so. Um, and to be able to share it is even a bigger gift. And I recall a while back you interviewed, you know, one of our dearest friends and colleagues, um, Cantor Vladimir Lapin. And I just loved watching and listening. So I'm really excited to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me and including me. Ah, oh, well, thank you for saying yes. And as you just said it is really exciting to be back and uh, the fact that my congregants were, are actively asking for more episodes is a sign that there is this desire even though we're all stuck at home and you know having all these issues there's still a desire to learn and to hear about other people's stories so of course as i said in the intro here at temple shalom we're a small congregation 126 families versus your congregation. So I know what it's been like for me and for my congregants here, but what has COVID and this new unprecedented world brought for your folks? Yeah, I think um, it's certainly a unique time and um, WISE is, is a very unique congregation. Um, I grew up at a place, you know, similar to where, to, to your community, um, a smaller place with um, one rabbi, one cantor, and um, everybody knew each other. So I'm familiar with that energy too and love that. And I would say um, in some ways WISE is different, but also not because there's lots of different communities within the community. Um, and we do have a day school and um, a very large preschool. Um, so I would say um, it's really exciting to have so many young families and this time has been particularly challenging, you know, for working parents, people with little ones at home. So um, as clergy and, and temple and school leadership, we've really tried to reach out to our school families and do lots of creative things, um, certainly with the virtual learning. And now um, the littles are back on campus. They're in small pods of eight. So God forbid if there were, you know, some kind of case, you can track it and just close down that pod. So we've had to um, be really creative and careful about <laughs> how cautionary to be, but also to, you know, get the little ones <laughs> back on campus so that their parents can breathe a little bit. Um, and I'm really, you know, proud of some of the on-campus stuff we've been doing because of course, like you said, I'm in California, so it's not <laughs> snowy or cold. So we've been able to do drive-in Shabbats, you know, where kids and families are in their car um, and, you know, can honk and sing. Um, and that's been really meaningful. I actually um, took a maternity leave right before COVID. And so the week I was supposed to come back was the week the world sort of shut down. So just being able to be in person, but of course, socially distant um, and masked and to sing and be with people um, was so, so heartwarming. 
Um, but now everything's shut down again um, because California, actually Los Angeles has the highest number of COVID cases in the world, um, which is pretty devastating. So also just trying to message to our people that they should stay home um, and try to encourage everybody to be safe. So we've been trying to adapt and also use Jewish values to, um, to address you know, what's going on and how we can take care of ourselves and other people. Absolutely. And you mentioned a bit about services and programming. And what are some of the programs that you are leading for your congregation? Yeah, so um, I'm really involved in our schools um, and I get to lead, um, you know, store a time for the little ones and um, services for um, our elementary aged kids and religious school kids. Um, I also run, um, co-run our Wise Women programming and we've been doing lots of fun different things. We baked Sufganiot last week and we have a once a month book club. We just read, if you haven't read, Laura Cantor Laura, The Book of Longings. Um, it's by Sue Monk Kidd, who wrote The Secret Life of Bees, and it's about Jesus's wife. Um, a fic fiction, of course, but she's obviously a Jewish woman, and it was so good. Um, so if anyone wants to check that out, highly recommend. So I've been doing some wise women stuff, and then for our um, young adults, also doing, you know, monthly havdalot or game nights, just ways um, for our younger people to, to check in. Um, so lots of different things going on. And I think one of the biggest things I spend my time doing is working on our recordings for our Shabbat services. Um, everything's pre-recorded. I have a little makeshift recording studio in my bedroom, actually, where I have pillows to block any extra sound. Um, and um, really trying to learn the technology to be able to do that um, in, a, in a successful way. And it's been really challenging. Um, but also I really enjoyed um, learning more about music production. So that's been sort of a plus of this time too. Yes, I was going to say, I don't recall taking a class in sound engineering when you're at HUC. <laughs> no, right, right. And maybe, maybe we should, or maybe, you know, I think that certainly a lot of um, careers and callings are going to evolve um, after COVID and hopefully people will be able to work from home more um, and um, develop new skills. So it's been really hard, but it's also exciting. That all sounds fantastic. And I will definitely read that book you recommended. It sounds <laughs> really interesting. So yeah. um, if our audience can't tell by now, um, Cantor Lutz and I met when we were first year students in Jerusalem at um, HUC. Oh, good times. <laughs> and, the best times. <laughs> in, the best times ever. Uh, ranging from eating birthday cake with a cup Mm -hmm. Ask me about that story one day. It's, it's quite funny. <laughs> and um, one thing we both um, have in common, especially, is that both Cantor Lutz and I were fortunate enough to meet our Besherits, our wonderful spouses, during that first year of study. So that's my way of saying that, of course, Cantor Lutz is married to Rabbi Lutz, who is also a rabbi in a different Congregation, I'm wondering if you could t speak a little bit to what that experience has been like. Yeah, well, first I have to say that I have the best memories of our year in Israel. It was almost 10 years ago now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I can't wow. believe we've been friends that long, you know, and, and, you know, unfortunately we weren't able to come to your guys' wedding because we just moved to California, but, you know, you were at our wedding yeah. and um, that was beautiful. You know, we've had a lot of happy happy times together and our, our, our sort of year in Israel cohort, we're really lucky um, to have some very dear friends. And of course I'm missing Israel so much right now. Um, and hoping, you know, there's a safe way to get back there, God willing soon, because it's such a special place. And we have those special memories of, like you said, meeting our Beshert. Um, my husband, Adam, is a rabbi at Temple Emanuel of Beverly Hills, and he's a rabbi educator. So he runs their school. And um, he just loves his job. He actually was an aerospace engineer. You know, he had a whole life like, like your husband um, before the rabbinate. Um, and uh, he really loves technology. So he's really thriving during this stay at home time. He has um, really enjoyed working on the virtual learning for his school and for his temple. 
Um, so it's really been amazing to see him adapt and use all of his skills. Um, and we're just lucky. We're lucky to be able to have jobs in the same place. Um, you know, there are so many uh, couples from our year in Israel. I think there was something in the water <laughs> that year. Like, yes. For 36 of us and 12 of us are now married and six, six married couples. So, um, so it's certainly a challenge to be sort of placed, you know, husband and wife or husband and husband, wife and wife. Um, but we're lucky and we're just, we're trying to stay positive this year, of course, and, um, enjoying our work a lot. And, um, it's been, it's been up and down, but, but mostly good. That's wonderful to hear. And in a very similar situation up North, um, you know, just trying to figure out what it looks like to be a two clergy household. But um, you mentioned our year in Israel. I want to go back to a story. You were actually the one who outed Rabbi TV and myself as a couple. <laughs> we were sitting um, in the student lounge, which if you can picture it, has a whole like line of glass. So we were sitting, Rabbi TV and I are sitting at this table and we're studying, I think it was for a biblical grammar final, and mm -hmm. we're holding hands underneath the table. And all of a sudden, Cantor Lutz comes walking by and she sees us holding hands underneath the table. And we're, the two of us are sitting with another colleague. And all of a sudden I see this friend of ours like making weird faces toward the class. Like, what, what are you doing? And mouthing, and all of a sudden I turn around and I see Cantor Lutz there pointing at mine and Rabbi TV's hands like, oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, guilty as charge. Um, and I'm know. totally cool that you were the one who outed us as a couple. It was time. We had been together a month at that point. <laughs> totally. And as much as I think privacy is great when you're in like that kind of large family class thing, you know, um, it was time. It was time. And you guys are such an amazing match. Like, I just, I was just so excited I was going to burst. So, um, yeah, so uh, <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> well, thank you for that. And I would say the same thing about you and Adam. And of course, your beautiful baby girl, Ruby. Oh my goodness, you're a mom. <laughs> I am a mom and Ruby's going to be one next week. How is uh, that possible? I know, I know. I've, I've really been home for the better part of a year <laughs> since she was born. Um, but, you know, no child has ever had so much quality time with her parents and grandparents than this child this year, because we were in a pod um, with the four grandparents and they all help us with childcare, um, which has been so amazing. Um, but yeah, she's almost one and she's pulling herself up, trying to walk. She's not quite there yet, but um, trying all different kinds of foods and she's babbling and she just says, hi, 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 Ema, hi, Ema. Um, so it's really cute and she's just the light, she's the light of my life. And I wanted to be a mom so badly. Um, and, you know, everything comes at the right time and she's just the greatest gift that God has ever given me. Um, so I'm lucky to be her Ema. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. And for those of you, um, Ema is Hebrew for mom. So yeah. for those who may not uh, know that. But um, how would you say becoming a mother has, if it has, changed your cantrid in any way? Oh, yeah, certainly. I think, um, you know, things that I would luxuriously take time on before, um, now, you know, I, not, I don't try to rush, but certainly I have had to work on time management, um, and to, to find a better balance. And, um, you know, I've never been, I still haven't been a mom who's worked in an office really, you know, because of COVID. So it, it, it's been really challenging to work from home. And like I said, try to record things with a baby <laughs> in the house, but also we've had so much extra time with her. Um, so it's been this strange, um, blessing actually. And I, I just feel like I can connect more to people, um, because, you know, I've gone through this huge 
life experience. And like I said, we have this really large day school at our temple. So um, I'm really excited to be not just clergy, but really a part of my community and to really grow alongside the families. And God willing, I'll be at WISE for a very long time. Um, so I just feel like, you know, my perspective has changed, but I'm, I'm still feel like me too. So I think it's all about finding a balance, you know, and discovering your identity as a parent and trying to stay connected to who you are and your neshama and your soul and, and do things that, um, connect you to your child, but also connect you to yourself. You know, I've been doing a lot of baking in quarantine and I'm not a patient person. You probably know that about me. I, I get excited. I like things to happen. And like, you know, like from your story, I needed, I needed, you know, to acknowledge that you and Stefan were a couple. Um, so, uh, so I think holding on to pieces of myself and also just cultivating, you know, new things, um, that's been really important. And um, I used to take that for granted when I wasn't a mom, you know, so now any time to myself um, is, is a gift. And then just being with her is, I mean, anyone who's a parent knows that um, just watching them grow is, is really special. Absolutely. Oh, I've heard from you and several of my other guests who are new parents and they've all said very similar things there's nothing like becoming a parent right <laughs> changes you for the better yeah and i think i'm relating to my own parents in a different way too um you know certainly it's a jewish it's very jewish um becoming a parent and learning to relate to your parents differently, right? All these stories, especially that we're reading now in the book of Genesis with the Joseph story and complicated relationships between parent and child and siblings. Um, I feel like all of that has taken on a new meaning to me too. Um, and really just feeling grateful for my parents and everything that they did and knowing that even small, you know, I wouldn't even call them mistakes, but um, things that maybe in the past I would have said, oh, I wish, you know, my parents had done that differently or my brother and I had related in a different way. I just feel like I have a lot more empathy now <laughs> and I, um, a new perspective. So it's beautiful relating to them differently and then reading, reading the Torah differently this year too has been really um, powerful and beautiful. That is wonderful. And um, speaking of perspective, going back to the job for a minute, now that you are a mom to a daughter, you are the one female clergy person in a team of all male clergy. What is that like? <laughs> so, well, so when I started at WISE, which was now almost five years ago, um, I was the only clergy, uh, female clergy. We've since actually hired Rabbi Sari Laufer, um, oh, I, came didn't from, I apologize, I didn't see it on the website. Yeah, um, she came from Temple Road of Sholem in New York City, um, which is near my old apartment. Ugh, I miss New York so much. I'm a West Coaster, but I, I love New York and I was lucky to live there when we were in school together. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. I would say that the first year was tough. I wasn't always sure of my place. And I don't know how much of that was gender and how much of that was just being the youngest clergy member on a big team at a big place. And like I said, I grew up at a much smaller temple, so I didn't really understand, um, you know, working on a big team. And I was lucky enough to work at Union Temple of Brooklyn, um, which is now part of Congregation Beth Elohim of Brooklyn. They just started their merger, which is really exciting. But um, while I was in school, I worked with one rabbi, Rabbi Linda Henry Goodman, um, my, my loving teacher. So I didn't really, all, this whole dynamic of being on a large clergy team and sharing duties and trying to understand who's in charge of what. And, you know, as cantors, it's a little different than being a rabbi because we're in charge of music and ritual, but we also do almost everything that a rabbi does. Um, so I think just... <laughs> trying to find my place um, in a large team and then and finding my voice you know as a female clergy and um, um, it was it was hard and it was really a lot there was good growth for me there and I mean my senior rabbi um, Yoshi's why back I mean you know him because he was our teacher in Israel that's going to be my next question what's it like working with our old professor yeah. Well, he, Rabbi Yoshi, you know, he has three daughters and he's, he's such a feminist. So he always encourages me to use my voice, um, 
and he's he's so inclusively he has such an inclusive mindset so i'm really blessed that he's my he's my lifelong teacher and my my um you know my boss and also you know clergy partner um and also all all of the the people on my team are just so amazing and now to have rabbi sari um we we started this wise women programming together and i mean she's become like my sister so that has been priceless having having a partner like that you know um she she's everything to me um and we laugh together and we collaborate and we study and we create and so that's been really magical but i would say overall it's just been a really positive experience and i think even when things are challenging there's such opportunity for growth um so i'm just excited to see you know what's going to happen in in jewish life after COVID. i think people are really going to be yearning for community and connection and Certainly they're coming to the temple now, like you said, your, your community was thirsty for more Cantor Laura and friends, you know? Um, so I think people are really hungry for that community and meaning making. So I think it's gonna be um, a little while before we get there, but I do think that it's gonna be a really exciting chapter in synagogue life and I'm excited. Absolutely. Well, thank you once again, Cantor Lutz, for coming on and being my first West Coast guest. It was such a pleasure to get to spend this time with you and for us to catch up and just hear your story. This was so fun and Temple Sholem, I'm sure you all know, but you are so lucky to have Cantor Laura Bresnik as your clergy person. She's such an um, warm, empathetic, extremely talented, you know, bright young woman. I'm lucky that she's my friend. So I feel blessed to be a part of this and now, uh, you know, uh, part of your community in a way. Um, and I just wish everybody good health um, into the new year. And thank you so much for including me. This was so much fun. <laughs> Absolutely. Once again, thank you. And for our Cantor Laura and friends, this is Cantor Laura Bresnik signing off. Bye everyone. Bye.